It's early March, we're at Toledo Bend. It's one of my favorite places to be this time of year. You know, it's pre-spawn, water temperature's in the low 50s, perfect conditions to catch big pre-spawn fish in Texas. But you just never know about the weather. I think coming on these TV shows is easy. Fish are chomping out there. They're biting like crazy. We can't get the cameras all wet, so. Oh well. You know, I don't want to be out on the water when there's lightning, but if it's just rain, I'm going to be out there. Trying to decide if that's coming this way or... Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just go and we'll, uh, we'll go around the corner and if we have to, we'll go to a dock. The sky's kind of cleared off and we started fishing. The lake's real low and there's not a lot of vegetation right now. It's fishing six, seven foot deep flats and they got just a little bit of grass in them. Well, we finally got a little window where it kind of cleared out, but it rained so much. I mean, there's all these pockets are real muddy and uh, the water stained, but the lake's going to already start to rise. You know, that fresh water's coming in. It was a good warm rain. Those bass should, you know, they almost feel it immediately, and uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna move shallower and get in this dirtier water. I'm gonna try a spinner bait a little bit and see if we can get something going with it. Toledo Bend is a big lake. It's an older lake, and it has a tremendous amount of timber in it. And over the years, it's gotten hydrilla in it. It's a 186,000 acre impoundment on the Sabine River. We're fishing on the lower end of the lake in some of these large spawning bays that do have some hydrilla. A really nice mud line right here blowing off this point. A lot of times those bass will use that as cover. They'll just run right down those mud lines and you know wait for bait fish. The bait fish like it too. It, a lot of food in the water when you have that mud blown in the water and stuff. So I love to throw a spinner bait down those clay points and where the mud's coming off there and mixing with that clear water. With the lake being so low, it made the water extremely clear. You could see down six, eight feet. There he is. Oh man, he hammered it off this windy point. I just changed with this clear water to a real good shad pattern, that blue glimmer shad or blue shad's my, one of my favorites when it's clear like this. And uh, second cast. I'm gonna get back out there. The wind's blowing across these points and it's perfect conditions for a spinner bait. You know, it's, it's just a lot of flats with scattered grass on it, and I need a bait that I can cover a lot of water with. It's perfect for, you know, a spinner bait or a jerk bait or a lipless crank bait. So, I like throwing spinner baits, especially because they catch a lot of big fish. So we're gonna we're gonna try that and see if we can uh, catch some of these quality fish. There it is. That's a good one. Good one too. Oh boy. Look how he swallows it. <laughs> That's how you want him to bite your spinnerbait. Trailer hook outside the mouth. Quality fish. Pre-spawn, just, just pulling up. Water's super clear. You can see down six, seven foot right here. So I'm just throwing a, you know, a blue shad, KVD Pro Model spinnerbait, and just kind of twitching it and jerking it and making it look like it's an injured shad. Double willow combination gives me the little faster retrieve. Those fish will just come up there and swallow it on days like today. Good low light conditions. As the day wore on, I started seeing more signs of activity. Turtles swimming around, birds being active, occasional bait fish flicking. And I knew the bass would have to be active. I just had to find them. One of the things that is so important for me is to follow the seasonal patterns. And in the spring of the year, it's all about fishing the flats. And on a lake like this that has hundreds and miles and miles of flats, you know, you can uh, be looking for a needle in a haystack. So it's important to cover water quickly. What I'm looking for, for good spawning flats, is ones that have a lot of depth change within them. You know, little ditches and drains, depressions, uh, irregularities. If the lake has grass, you want it, you know, where there's a good mix of grass. I, like out here, there's clumps of sand with edges of grass. It's got the perfect scenario. And all kinds of depth that goes, it comes up to three foot, goes down to seven, eight, and 10 and you need a bait that you can cover a lot of water with because you can spend a lot of time searching these areas out where there's no fish at. So cover a lot of water, use a reactionary type bait, 
keep the trolling motor on high, and then once you find those fish, that's when you want to slow down uh, with, a, with a soft plastic or a jig or something like that and really work that area thoroughly. You know, I encountered a similar situation in East Texas one early spring, cold front, rising muddy water. And what worked for me was flipping a black neon tube in the buck brush, but it wasn't just normal flipping. I had to flip that thing in there and let it sit, sit, and sit, and sit. Watch the grass grow is what I'm trying to say. This might be something else that might work for you in same situations. As the day wore on, the conditions didn't really change that much. Occasionally the wind would pick up for a little bit, then it'd calm back down. I just kept covering water. I knew sooner or later that I'd run into the bass. With this cloud, you know, a reaction bait is a good choice, but I haven't been able to get them to eat a spinner bait very good or a lipless crank bait, so I'm going to stick with this jerk bait and see if I can't catch some, some quality fish. I saw several nice ones with it. They just want that real erratic action out of it. I'm just jerking it real hard with short little pauses. The more casts that I can make and the more bass that I can show that wild trainer to, the more strikes I'm going to get. Oh, there it is. God, he hammered it. <laughs> I could just see the edge of that sand right there. Nope. Fat one. I mean, that one's just moved up here. That's what you want. Those ones with a big belly like that, pre-spawn. That's the perfect spot right there. There's a point. Grass. I got real light colored lenses on my sunglasses today, and it helps you on these dark days to, to be able to see. Now, this water's gin clear, and these flats are only about six, seven foot deep, and they're scattered grass and sand, and I'm trying to target those edges. There he is. There's a good one. There's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one right there. Big fat belly. I mean, stone colded the wild shiner. <laughs> Couldn't even hardly get up out of the water. Look at the belly on that one. Black spots. <laughs> That's a fat one there. That thing hit it so hard I couldn't even. I jerked it like that and the rod went straight back the other way. That's what you like when you're throwing a jerk bait is when they are really hitting it like that. Those hooks just had them every which way. That's a fat one there. Five of those in most tournaments would do pretty darn good right there. Wow. A couple of fish real close right here in this proximity. That's what these baits are so good at is you can cover a lot of water quick. And then once you get a couple of bites, that's when you want to slow down and work that area thoroughly. There's probably quite a few fish in this little area. There's a huge flat out here, but some of the little ditches and depressions are going to hold more than others. So when you finally get them, slow down and work it real thoroughly with the bait you're using, and then maybe try another bait or two. I'm using fluorocarbon line. The fluorocarbon is real low and stretch, so when I snap that rod real hard like that, it really makes that bait jump in the water. I want that wild action. I want it as erratic as possible. There's one, and the fluorocarbon is what does it. I knew they'd have to be somewhere out here. He just hammered it too. Well, it took the rod away from me. This flat is so big, it's be hard that right now. The fish are kind of in that mode where they're not real aggressive. And uh, we've had some severe fronts come through and you know, the action of that jerk bait is just something that they can't handle. The next morning, we woke up to a 180 degree difference from the day before. High bright skies, temperatures in the 30s, you know, cold, wind, tough post frontal conditions. The bass know in these conditions that it's not conducive for them to feed. So I know that the strike zone is going to be a lot smaller and I'm going to really have to make these fish react because they're not going to be feeding. The lake jumped up a foot overnight and it's gotten real dirty. Lipless crankbaits are, are really good. They got a lot of vibration, allows you to cover a lot of water and uh, you know I'm just trying to see if maybe the bass moved in with this water that came up. Uh, or if they're kind of pulled out, but they shouldn't be far from the flats and the spawning areas where they left. So we're gonna we're gonna keep working at it. There's a good one too. Uh, he's got me around a tree. Got him. He just hammered it. <laughs> Boy, it's cold today. They're so sluggish you can't even jump. Oh, 
Oh. He had all the black spots on him. You only see that in lakes where you got really healthy populations of fish. That's what's weird about that, those black spots where there's tons of bass. Only happens where you have lots of, lots of bass. He's right up there on the inside grass line. Now this cove's got a lot of timber in it too, which is that much more cover, but I'm still fishing these flats and just taking that bait and, and running it, throwing it up there onto the sand and I had a, kind of like a 45 degree angle and just pulling it out until I hit the grass and you hit the grass, you rip it free. And this bait um, flutters down, it's by design, it's got a little change in the sides on it and it, and it kind of wiggles as it flutters, it shimmies kind of down to the bottom and it, they really can't stand that. It's a phenomenal lipless crankbait. Good fish right there. Big fish, big fish. That's the one I've been looking for. And he swallowed it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind we're looking for. There we go. There she goes. God, there he is. Oh man, he hit it close to the boat. That's a good one too. I just caught a five pounder and got another one. <laughs> he swallowed the red eyed rattler. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's a beauty. Big fat fish. Look, it's been up there. You can see that right there. See that? I can wipe the brown off. She's been up there rubbing on the bottom, getting in there, thinking about spawning. They're moving up onto these places today and they're gonna eventually spawn here, but. A lot of times on these post-frontal days, the bite is good real early, and then as the sun gets up higher and higher, it gets tougher and tougher. Unfortunately, I can't pick the days that I can go fishing. I gotta catch them no matter what the weather's doing. So I just keep working hard at it. 